This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. Since the January 6th insurrection, one of the topics I've been talking about the most uh, is consequences for Donald Trump, prosecution for Donald Trump. And there are multiple directions we can go. All we can, we can all do it at the same time. It could, <laughs> it, it could be done uh, across uh, jurisdictions, as I'm going to talk about here. But it, it, it actually looks like there's a, a roadmap being uh, devised being talked about by the Brookings Institute. They wrote a report, and I'm going to read from this article from the Business Insider. Donald Trump could be charged with multiple crimes over his attempts to overturn his loss in Georgia, report says. This is one asset, uh, one facet of that. The other would be obstruction of justice that was outlined in the Mueller report, which did not, which did not, which did not exonerate Donald Trump. This article, former President Donald Trump could be charged with multiple crimes over election interference in Georgia, a new analysis says. The report by the Brookings Institution, a think tank in Washington, D.C., analyzed publicly available evidence that showed that Trump and his allies attempted to pressure Georgia's officials to change the lawful outcome of the election. A key piece of evidence is the now infamous call Trump made to Republican Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger on January 3rd, in which the then president told him to, quote, find 11,780 votes to overturn Joe Biden's victory in the state. Quote, there's no way I lost Georgia, Trump repeatedly said throughout the call. There's no way we won by hundreds of thousands of votes. Those assertions were false as Biden won the state by nearly 12,000 votes, becoming the first Democratic presidential nominee to carry the longtime Republican stronghold since 1992, which would have been Bill Clinton. The report added that Trump publicly pressured and personally contacted several other Republican officials in Georgia to ask for their help in overturning his electoral loss in the state, including Governor Brian Kemp and Attorney General Chris Carr. Trump reportedly placed direct calls to the officials in December to urge them to go along with increasingly desperate plans to decertify his loss, the report said. And if you remember, I don't know if you know, because you're probably a, a normal person who doesn't pay attention to politics on the weekend, and especially Donald Trump's insane rally of morons. Well, he had a, a rally in Georgia this weekend during which he talked about pressuring the governor of Georgia, Brian Kemp, to hold a special election to clear up the election problems. Watch this. But I said to these young people, let me handle it. I was going to show them how good I am. <laughs> let me handle it. I'll call them up. I said, Brian, listen, you know, you have a big election integrity problem in Georgia. I hope you can help us out and call a special election, and let's get to the bottom of it for the good of the country. Let's get to the bottom of it for the good of your state. Let's go. Election integrity. What could be better than that? Sir, I'm sorry. I, I cannot do that. I said, whoa. I said, you cannot do that. And that's why, uh, let me tell you, this guy's a disaster. He's a disaster. Yeah. He's admitting to his crimes. Continuing with the article... We conclude that Trump's post-election conduct in Georgia leaves him at substantial risk of possible state charges predicated on multiple crimes, the report said. These charges potentially include criminal solicitation to commit election fraud, intentional interference with performance of election duties, conspiracy to commit election fraud, criminal solicitation, and state RICO violations. The report also added that criminal liability could extend to some Trump allies, including his personal, former personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. Giuliani appeared before committees in the Georgia State Capitol with the intent of persuading lawmakers to take extraordinary action to reverse Biden's win, the report noted. In February, Raffensperger's office opened an investigation into Trump's efforts to overturn his loss in the state. And... We've talked about this before. Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis also launched a criminal investigation into Trump's conduct related to the election. 
The Brookings Institution report analyzed these investigations and suggested the crimes that Trump could be charged with, along with his legal defenses. The report suggested that Trump would likely claim immunity, arguing that he cannot be prosecuted for actions taken while he was in office. Former presidents, and this is something to note, this is very important, uh, a a fact that Donald Trump will ignore, just like him trying to claim executive privilege when he cannot do so as a ex-president. Former presidents enjoy a measure of immunity for actions taken that, quote, fall somewhere within the scope of his lawful duties as a federal official, according to the report. However, in this case, Trump's actions were well outside the scope of his official duties, the report noted. So where are we? Why is the federal government silent on this? I complain about Merrick Garland, and a lot of you push back and say, well, it might be a secret investigation. That's not how things work. They don't have to give the details of what they're looking into, but even a grand jury is a public, it might be a secret proceeding, but the fact that the grand jury exists and what they're investigating is not secret. They need to do something. There needs to be consequences in order that we safeguard this country and future elections and future presidents for future generations. What do you think, though? Am I too aggressive on this? I'd love to know. You can call. Leave me a brief voicemail, 714-576-4054. Of course, you can... Email me daily at dollamore.com. Thanks for engaging with my content. Follow me on social media. I'd love to connect with you there. And if you, I bring you value, please consider supporting my work here on the platform for as little as $2 a month. You can become a channel member. Click the join button below the video to see what's involved. Or you can head on over to patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast, which is not just for my podcast. I love you guys. I will see you next time until I do. Be genuine. Take care of one another.